Welcome to the rap book. Welcome to the rap book, yeah. Where we are doing the talk and we inventing the walk. This is the rap book, yeah. What's up, what's up? I know it's been a minute, but we are about to get back up in it. What's up, y'all? I am your host, Azaria, a.k.a. Z, and you're listening to The Rap Book. Now, look, some of y'all been hitting my mama up. <clears throat> I'm not going to say no names, but y'all been hitting my mama up about me not posting for The Rap Book. Now, y'all got to give a sister a break. I've been busy. Look, I'm a whole college student out here, and I got stuff that I've been trying to plan and work out and just set up so that I can be successful. So please bear with me. I'm trying, y'all. I'm going to try to produce more content. Please don't get on my case no more. Don't be calling my mama on me. But look, with that being said, I'm going to get into the bars of the day. So the bars of the day today are Life of a College Student. Um, I'm going to be bringing up 50 Cent's book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. I'm going to be talking about um, another entrepreneur with my BBB ad. You already know how we do it. And lastly, I came up with another segment that I think you all would like. It's called History Hitmakers. So please stay tuned to what I got for y'all. What's up, y'all? So one of the bars of the day, I just wanted to talk about life of a college student. So being a college student, I feel like people forget that we are broke. I mean, I get calls from from friends asking for $20, um, you know, parents expecting you to pay certain things. And it's just like, did you forget that I have to maintain a lot of different things and pay for a lot of different things just within school alone, let alone all the things that I have to pay for within the things that I want to do around school? And what I mean by this is like, for instance, we have to pay, we all, you already know we have to pay for tuition and um, like dues and stuff for different organizations. But people also forget that we have to still invest in our careers that we are learning about. Like, for instance, for me, um, because I'm a mass media major, I'm having to buy equipment now that that will soon help me advance my career and advance my skills. And sometimes I feel like people people really forget that those are things that we have to deal with and that we have to pay for on our own. And like these organizations and other things that that people are able to do are not cheap. You know, we're paying fifty dollars here or, you know, one hundred dollars here is up you know, up to a thousand sometimes, like it just, it, it varies, but we're, we're still paying thousands and thousands of dollars. And people honestly, I think forget that. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking of college students. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about as far as college students is the fact that so many college students only go to college or are going to college, like to leave for college because they're in toxic or just non-supportive home situations or households. Um, like, I know so many students that um, are in a space where their parents just don't give them the freedom to be themselves or to create or um, speak in a way that they would that they would like to. And I feel like that's kind of sad. Um, I feel like that kind of needs to be addressed because how, as a parent, can you make me have all of these adult responsibilities? For example, uh, watching my siblings, uh, having a job to help you pay bills, paying my own tuition, and then you can't even allow me to have a safe space to do yoga and meditate or or practice my art and sing or, uh, you know, just anything. And I just think that um parents should should be a lot more understanding that we working with what we have and because you're our parents we can't we can't um disrespect you and it kind of doesn't do anything but forces us to to run away from you after we do end up getting the chance to leave and branch off and do our own thing. So I just want a lot of parents to to think about that when when they're dealing with their kids and just 
let them have their space and let them be themselves. And I know that can be hard sometimes when you have multiple children, but you've got to find time to let your kids be who they're going to be and make their decisions. Um, That's another thing, too. Parents love to harp or or get mad at the decisions that we make but they have to understand this is this is me and this is my decision and especially when it's when it's like as far as spending money on things we shouldn't or or just hanging out with people that we shouldn't and it's like mom you have to let me learn on my own you have to let me let me do my thing and I know that can be hard for parents because all you want is the best for us but you got to just let us let us do our own thing and breathe and just learn on our own, make the mistake on our own. So then we can at least come back to you and be like, you know what, mom, you know that time when you told me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I should have listened, you know, but at least that'll be a learning moment. And that that's a that's an opportunity for us to grow. And it also doesn't ruin our relationship. So. Yeah, that's that's really all I have for the college students. So t- stay tuned, y'all, because I have more coming up. So the bar, the second bar of the day is 50 Cent's book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. So I just wanted to come on here and share a little bit about this book because I kind of came across a across the audio book. I haven't finished it yet, so don't get on my case, but maybe we can talk about it and discuss it when I do finish it. Um... I just wanted to share because Curtis Jackson is really dropping some gems. Like in this book, y'all, he gives a few tips on how to master the mind of a hustler. And in it, he talks about things like learning from your losses and actively seeking to learn um, from the things that, that happen to you so that you can prevent excuses and being stuck in a loser mindset. Uh, He talks about being fearless. Now, this one really stuck out to me because a lot of times I don't do things because I'm scared or or I fear the results before it even happens. Uh, I remember one time watching a video about Shonda Rhimes who uh, did a TED talk about how she said yes to the things that scared her for a year. And I just I constantly go back to that thought of being fearless, like, dang, if I just took the time to say, you know what, I'm not even scared or I don't even care that I'm scared and I'm just going to do it, I would be so much better off and so much more successful. So I thought that was really interesting. Another thing that he was really talking about was don't outshine the master. And I think that's really important. Um, when he when he says don't outshine the master, he just means like don't get too high on your horse and act like you know more than the person that's that's teaching you or trying to teach you. I think that's really important because a lot of times us as people, we get some information and we think that now all of a sudden we're the expert. But no, there's so much growing and so much more learning and adapting that we have to do on that subject. Um, A few other things he talked about was losing entitlement, uh, knowing your value, building a strong and supportive crew. Um, And another thing that he mentioned was cultivating the heart of a hustler. And with that, he used an analogy by basically saying that treat your treat treat hustling as as a motor and use your passions to fuel that to fuel that that motor. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, y'all should really give it a a, um, a listen or a, or a read, and comment and let me know what y'all think. Welcome to welcome to the rap book. What's up, y'all? You already know what it is. This is a Black Business Brilliance ad. This week's Black Business Brilliance ad goes to Chef Shatika. Chef Shatika is a local Nashville chef catering in anything southern style cuisine like i mean anything y'all when it comes to soul fried chicken collard greens all all your needs she got you you can find chef shatika at on instagram at c-h-e-f-s-h-a-t-i-c-k-a her name is shatika robinson and i promise y'all she will not do you 
wrong. I'm telling y'all, she got all the good grub for a good price. And she might even hook you up for Super Bowl weekend. So please get on it. Hit up Chef Shatika, C-H-E-F-S-H-A-T-I-C-K-A. Thank y'all. History's Hitmakers. So, y'all, y'all don't know what this is because this is a new segment that I came up with. It's just a funny name for black people that pioneered the way for us today. So, today's history hitmaker is going to be about Claudette Colvin. Now, I don't know if you all have heard of Claudette Colvin, but she's a civil rights activist. And she was the first woman to give up her seat on the bus, to, to refuse to give up her seat on the bus, excuse me. And um, many of us only know Rosa Parks, but Claudia Colvin did it nine months before Rosa Parks thought about doing it. So it was a day in, in, I think, 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, and Claudia Colvin was 15 at the time. She went on the bus with her friends, and nobody was sitting there at first, and then... Um, they were told that they had to move for um, a white lady or just some white person um, who was getting on the bus. And Claudette, she already had it in her mind. Her friends had already moved, but she she refused and she decided to stay because um, in my research, she had she when I watched a video of her, she had did, she had talked about how. During that week, they were learning a lot um, about Black history because it was Black History Week. You know, back then they didn't have a Black History Month. They only had a Black History Week. So it's funny that she had already been learning about her her history. And that kind of prompted her and motivated her to refuse her seat on the bus. And she kind of told us how she felt like Sojourner and Harriet were holding her down. And, um, yeah, so she refused to give up her seat, and she was later arrested and booked in the jail. So now y'all probably wondering why she was, she was never, you were never taught, taught her before or why she's not mentioned in the history books. Now, Martin Luther King and other civil rights activists, they had already been planning to boycott the buses, but they were, they were wanting to do it in a strategic way. So, um, you know, back then, when when they were going about, you know, publicizing these movements and, you know, getting people to join, they, they, they had to do it in a certain fashion. And because Claudette was 15, they really didn't want to use her. And another major discovery was that they later found out that she was pregnant. And, you know, in, in the 50s, a 15 year old pregnant um refused to give up her seat they just they didn't really agree with that so Martin Luther King and other other activists kind of I don't want to say staged but they kind of got Miss Rosa Parks to um refuse her seat on the bus so that they could kickstart the movement the boycott the Montgomery bus boycott off because you know they they thought that she had a better image um than Miss Colvin had due to the fact that she didn't have any kids, she was married, um, she was within a few organizations within the, the city and people knew her face and people knew her name and they felt like uh she would she would be a better a better fit for someone who refused their seat on the bus. So that's what they decided to do and Claudette Colvin's name is slightly mentioned now in her interview that I saw she she's not really upset about she wasn't really upset about her name not being mentioned as long as somebody's is to make the change and I thought that was really really big of her because you know that takes a lot to to have somebody else's name mentioned when you know take credit for something that you started or something that you did so that just shows you uh how big of a person she is. And I just wanted to share with y'all a little history about her just so y'all can know about her too. So when we're thinking about black pioneers, don't just think of the the usual typical ones. So yeah, thank y'all. 
All right, so if you're still listening, I appreciate you for staying tuned in, but that's kind of all I got for y'all today. If you're not already following me, follow me on Instagram at that's Z baby, T H A T S Z B A B Y. And I will see you next time. Mwah.